this is not getting discussed on the mainstream media. Not only are they wrong legally, but the fact that they would do this is outrageous. This is an overreaction and really nonsense. How would you react if this was your son or your daughter? It's the offense of knowing the truth. It's the offense of having an alternate world view. Saying God bless you to someone is not a violation of the law. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone. We're doing a, a series here dealing with the situation in the Middle East. And right now we're focusing on this proposed government merger between the Palestinian Authority. They control, and we're going to show it on a map right now, the West Bank. The uh, other part of the Palestinian Authority, which is not controlled by Fatah, is Gaza. That is controlled by Hamas. There is right now a proposed merger between Hamas and Fatah. This merger would be a merged government. It would take the more moderate Fatah, which used to be a terrorist organization but is now moderate, if you can imagine that, and merge it with a designated terrorist organization, Hamas. I'm going to go into the charter in greater detail in the broadcast, but Jordan, this proposed merger changes the entire dynamic in the region. We've got an office in Jerusalem. You've been there. I've been there. Uh, I'm going back there again later in the year. We've got a full team there. This has really created a sea change in the, in the area and specifically for Israel. It has, absolutely. I mean, you've got a situation now uh, where you've got uh, uh, trying to form this unity government between a reformed terrorist organization, the Palestinian Authority, and a current terrorist organization. The current terrorist organization is not backing down in recognition of Israel. The reformed terrorists don't want to recognize Israel. So you put them together, and you've got a situation where there's already U.S. law. It's been there since 2006 that says we're not going to fund uh, governments that have Hamas as part of it. So why are we not now? Now, immediately stopping the funding. Instead of doing what the White House has said, and through Tony Blinken, one of the uh, national security advisors to the president, that we'll just wait and see what happens. And that's exactly the wrong approach. We're giving money to those who are waiting to see what happens. So we're funneling uh, and fueling, if you will, uh, the way that they get to move forward. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars here to those who are negotiating with making a deal with terrorists. $500 million a year minimum going to now a terrorist organization. Now, I'm going to take you just through one portion of the charter first. This is in the beginning of the covenants. This is the Hamas charter. We're showing it on the screen. Here's the quote. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it has obliterated others before. So that's the initial call inside the charter. The second one, this is Article 3, says this. They fear Allah and raise the banner of jihad in the face of the oppressors so that they would rid the land of the people of their uncleanness, vileness, and evils. That's talking about removal of the Jewish state. That's Article 3. Here's Article 7. The day of judgment will come about, O Muslims. Fight the Jews, killing the Jews. When the Jew will hide behind stones and trees, the stones and trees will say, O Muslim, O Abdullah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. This is in their charter, folks. And this is who we're going to give a half a billion dollars to? Simple answer, no. And we've got a petition up to say just that. We're going to stand with Israel. Scripture's clear. I'll bless those that bless thee, curse those that curse thee. And we're going to fight against this funding to the Palestinian Authority Unity Government with the terrorist group Hamas. ACLJ.org. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. 2255 to sign this petition standing with Israel. We've got an office in Jerusalem. We've got a full staff there, a team of lawyers and government affairs experts, much like our office in Washington, right there in the heart of the Middle East, right there in Jerusalem. And they're saying, we need your help. Everybody around the world could support us on this. ACLJ.org or 1 989 2255 to sign that petition. ACLJ.org, that's ACLJ.org, or 877 989 2255. Back with more in a moment. It is a dangerous and deadly combination, and it represents a grave threat to Israel. Hamas and the Palestinian Authority have announced their long planned unity government. 
The terrorists of Hamas will join the extremists in the Palestinian Authority, united in their resolve to destroy Israel. Here's the problem. The United States provides hundreds of millions of taxpayer funds to the Palestinian Authority. And the fact is that if this unity government is finalized, the U.S. will actually be funding Hamas. Don't let that happen. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and send a message to the president and to Congress. Tell Washington, tell the Obama administration, not one dime of your taxpayer dollars should fund jihadists. Add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's one 877 or you can add your name online, aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We're doing a series of specials dealing with the current situation in the Middle East, this proposed merger between the Palestinian Authority government. One is controlled by Fatah, the more moderate party. They control the West Bank. Gaza is controlled by Hamas. They have been operating separately. Now they're going to merge, which means the Palestinian Authority government will be controlled by Hamas, a terrorist organization, one that, as I mentioned in the first segment of the broadcast, calls for the annihilation of of the Jewish state. But let me read you more. This is coming, folks, right out of their charter. We're putting it on the screen. The liberation of Palestine is then an individual duty for every Muslim, wherever he may be. The day that enemies usurp part of Muslim land, jihad becomes the individual duty of every Muslim. That's in the charter. Then it goes on to say, in the face of the Jews' usurpation of Palestine, that is the creation of the Jewish state they're referring to, it is compulsory that the banner of jihad be raised against, of course, the Jewish state. So, Jordan, there is no question that Hamas, who we now will be giving money to if this goes through, calls for the annihilation of Israel and the Jewish state and Jews as a people. That's right. I mean, so you're talking about massive transformation to get Hamas to a point where the U.S. should even be part of uh, any kind of negotiations. We don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't negotiate and sit down and try to make agreements with people who call, uh, you know, at their core, call for the destruction of others. We don't support that. It's not something that we're okay with as the United States. And we've actually passed laws to ensure that we don't do so financially. But the case here is we're in a gray area based on what the White House says. The, that gray area is that, well, until there's actual a full unity government, then we're not going to actually take any actions. It's the wait and see, the lead from behind approach that this White House has become so famous for. And it is very dangerous because because we are funneling money into uh, negotiations between uh, two rival Palestinian factions. One, again, I'll repeat, a reformed terrorist group. The other, a current terrorist group. And we're paying for that. I mean, in hundreds of millions of dollars from the United States going. And that, of course, allows and enables those negotiations to continue. There is legislation pending right now, by the way. We heard from Senator Rand Paul on last week's broadcast uh, that will specifically prohibit recognition of any funding going forward unless the Palestinian Authority, including Hamas, recognizes Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state, recognizes the state of Israel, renounces terrorism, and purges all individual with terrorist ties from security services. That's a, a lot of requirements which should be in place before we give a nickel to the Palestinian Authority. Again, if you want to stand with Israel right now, let me encourage you to do it at aclj.org or one 989 2255 Scripture's clear. You, I will bless those that bless thee, curse those that curse thee. We've got a great petition up right now. Tens of thousands have signed it at aclj.org. That's aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. Jordan, let's go to the phones. Yep, right to the phones we go. Uh, let's go to Bonnie in California on line one. Bonnie, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Hi, Bonnie. Welcome to the broadcast. You're on the air. Hi. I, I find it shocking that the policy of our government in the past that's been stated is that we refused to negotiate with terrorists right. and that they would then expect a country to negotiate with terrorists. Well, I mean, you've got this whole situation, and let me play for you the soundbite from uh, Secretary of State Kerry. They've tried to walk this back, but he said if Israel doesn't cut a deal with the Palestinian Authority, which now it will include if this proposed merger goes through Hamas, that they risk becoming an apartheid state. First, there was kind of denial that he said it, and then the vi audio came out. Here's what it said. The unitary state winds up either being an apartheid state in second class citizens, or it winds up being a state that destroys the capacity of Israel to be a Jewish state. 
Jordan, what's the political fallout? I'm glad we were able to put the uh, the script. Uh, the audio wasn't that clear, but you heard him say apartheid, saying we put the audio up there for you. The, we put the titles up there so you could understand exactly what was said. But, Jordan, what's the political fallout from this one? Because Bonnie asked a really important question. That is, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Why are we even discussing this? Yeah, it's because the White House uh, will will fail to interpret the current existing law, which has been in place since Hamas came to power in 2006. The U.S. Congress passed it, was signed by then President uh, George W. Bush, that prevents U.S. funding to a Hamas government. I mean, it's very clear. It's not just to terrorists, it's to the Hamas government. And yet, because this unity government, on the one hand, has not yet... Uh, come together in a, in a recognized form. That means the, their negotiations are not over. It's their intent, but they haven't gotten there yet. That because of that, then they don't believe that that law kicks in. But they have said, but if Congress can push legislation to say we want to stop doing this now, then we would support that. So what they have done is punt this to Congress, even though they don't have to. Uh, so Congress has had to take the responsibility and try and get something forward in a bipartisan way into the president's desk as quickly as possible thing of this, of course, is it'll be very uh, clear for those that live in the region, our office in Jerusalem, that this unity government is nothing but a disaster, and I would say a disaster of huge proportions. All right, we're going back to the phones with your phone calls. Jordan, who's next? Yep, right back to the phones we go. Let's go to Bob calling in from California as well on line two. Bob, welcome to JSEC Yo Live. Hi, Bob. Hi. We need to pray for Israel and America because our upper government is is taking out they're undermining everything that we've worked for all these years well i mean you've got a situation where you look you know elections have consequences and the consequences of all this are that the the israel is not deemed to be the ally they once were by this administration i mean that's clear you could look at it any way you want but that's the position the administration's taking the problem is what Secretary of Kerry said about the apartheid state is really reflective of where the administration, Jordan, actually is on the relationship with Israel right now. That's right. I mean, that is the situation is that we are uh, getting a, a window into the uh, thinking and the discussions at the White House, what's going on behind the scenes. And if language like this is used, which I've never used, I've never heard anyone use the term apartheid about Israel, except for the 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 most uh, the strongest opponents of Israel, the enemies of Israel, I would go that far. Those are not just those who may have some questions or have some concerns about Israel, but literally I'm saying enemies of Israel are the only ones who use that term. And it means that John Kerry picked that up hanging out with those individuals. That he's not, and this is not, again, Palestinians. This is academics from around the world, the anti Israel uh, uh, ac- academia, if you will, and especially in Europe. And that's what he sounds like. He sounds like a European anti Israel intellectual, which goes exactly back to the reason why John Kerry had a tough time when he ran for president. This idea that he really wants to be a European intellectual. And now, uh, you know, years later, as Secretary of State, he's repeating the same kind of language that he would have picked up in meetings with people like that. We're going to be in Oxford, England, dealing with this issue uh, in this youth symposium that we're participating in. We did it last year as well, uh, defending Israel's right to exist. We've done it in the courts. We're doing it in universities. We're doing it in uh, uh, you know, in the halls of Congress, and we're doing it in, in the United Nations. It is that kind of multifaceted approach to defend Israel's right to exist. And I want to be able to tell participants that we've heard from 100,000 people standing with Israel and against this unified government with Hamas, the terrorists, and Fatah. You could join with us at ACLJ.org or one 989 2255 That's ACLJ.org or one 989 2255 Standing with Israel. Scripture again clear. I'll bless those that bless thee. Be part of that blessing. Stand with Israel. ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. Jordan, let's get another phone call. Steve calling in from Arizona online for Steve. Welcome to JSECU Live. Hi, Steve. All right. How are you guys doing today? Great. The depth of stupidity is fathomless with this administration. They obviously have turned their back on Israel. And if they would study their history, every nation that has ever turned their back upon Israel has fallen in dismay. Secondly... This administration makes excuses for their own ignorance, and, and making an excuses are nothing more that are nails that build the house of failure. I actually will take a little issue with you because I think this is not simply you know ignorance or naivete. This is the intentional policy of the Obama administration was to build this bit of hostility, bit of a, a wall between the United States and Israel, Jordan, as if this would appease 
the uh, the Muslim world, which it's clearly not. I mean, the whole Middle East policy of the administration has been a complete failure. I mean, probably worse now than it's been in the last 30 years. But the reality is this isn't something they've accidentally fallen into. This is, as you just said, their intentional actions on where they want to go. Right. I mean, this is something where the Palestinians, they want to make this deal. They are, they've they tried a number of times. So they're trying again now to make a unifying deal, knowing full well that if that deal moves forward, uh, they will be cut off from some of their uh, some of their funders in the world. The question is, uh, if they are cut off by the U.S., are they willing to risk that? Have we become that weak of an influential power that they are willing to risk our funding because they're getting funding from other sources? Or is it because they don't believe we'll actually pull the trigger on stopping that funding? Well, I, that's the you know that's going to be the question that's going to be asked here, and that's the one we're asking. Legislation's been proposed to stop this. We're backing that. We need your help on this. ACLJ.org for that petition. Standing with Israel, it's not you know it's not an option here. It's politically necessary. It is legally necessary, and frankly, it's biblically required. And I'll bless those that bless thee. This is part of the blessing. Standing with Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. ACLJ.org. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. ACLJ.org to sign that petition or 1-877-989-2255. Let me encourage you to like us on Facebook. Share this information in your social media. Follow Jordan on Twitter. All of that's important. But sign that petition now. ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. It is a dangerous and deadly combination, and it represents a grave threat to Israel. Hamas and the Palestinian Authority have announced their long-planned unity government. The terrorists of Hamas will join the extremists in the Palestinian Authority, united in their resolve to destroy Israel. Here's the problem. The United States provides hundreds of millions of taxpayer funds to the Palestinian Authority. And the fact is that if this unity government is finalized, the U.S. will actually be funding Hamas. Don't let that happen. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and send a message to the president and to Congress. Tell Washington, tell the Obama administration, not one dime of your taxpayer dollars should fund jihadists. Add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's one 1- 877-989-2255, or you can add your name online, aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. You know, we've done a documentary film on location in Israel, New York, and Washington, dealing with this entire situation in the Middle East. I want to play an excerpt from that film right now called The Export. The Hamas in Gaza receive support from the Iranians, they receive training from the Iranians, they receive equipment from the Iranians, but they are not Shiites, they are Sunnites. And there's a mistake, a, a wide mistake, of identifying Iran with the support of only two Shiite jihadist groups. This is the bridge between Shiite and Sunnite. They do not, um, or they were able to, to, to export support to Sunni groups like Hamas or like Palestinian Islamic Jihad, in spite of the hatred between these two streams in, in Islam. As long as you have a common enemy, the United States or Israel, Iran sees no problem with supporting Sunni groups as, as well. They never ever abandoned this uh, dream to uh, the way they uh, call it, to send us to the sea, to swim. Uh, so that we will uh, leave uh, this area. From Hamas, you hear that it's a religious commandment that Israel should not exist, that a non-Muslim state cannot be here. If this uh, has the upper hand, this trend, it's going to be tougher. This layer of religious fanaticism on top of political debates makes debates almost without a resolution. Because, you know, gods never compromise. People do. Right. If you get it from God that you can't have an enemy alive, then what the hope that we have. So I think it's the interest of really world order that this new trend of making everything religious commandment and, and the fanaticism goes with it loses this fight. 
You know, when you see that film, you know supporting Israel is critical. Let me encourage you again. Go to ACLJ.org, sign that petition, or 1-877-989-2255 to stand with Israel. ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. Jordan, let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Larry in California on line three. Larry, welcome to JSECU Live. Hi, Larry. Jay, I want to thank you for what you guys are doing. I went ahead and made my uh, contribution earlier. And I appreciate that. I'd like to the call to all our Christians and friends out there that support your organization and what you do for us out here. We should start putting our money where our mouth is. And also, not only that, call up our senators, our congressmen, as I did, and the White House, and demand that he be resigned. Apologize. You're talking about Secretary of State uh, John Kerry there in those statements that we played earlier about the apartheid statement. Uh, by the way, you, we're not the only one saying that, calling for his resignation. Uh, so is Senator Ted Cruz, and uh, he, he's been very clear. Let me play for you what Senator Cruz actually said about Secretary of State Kerry's comments uh, and what should be done for those. Take a listen. Mr. President, sadly... It is my belief that Secretary Kerry has proven himself unsuitable for the position he holds. And therefore, before any further harm is done to our national security interests and to our critical alliance with the nation of Israel, that John Kerry should offer President Obama his resignation. So, Jordan, let's talk about the political part of that. What is what is the likely fallout? They kind of walked it back a little bit after Senator Cruz and others, John Bolton. Others have come out calling for his resignation. What's the status right now? Sure. Well, you've got a situation where Secretary Kerry is yet to take to Capitol Hill, uh, but we would imagine that there he will face pressure and face uh, uh, some kind of, again, criticism by members of Congress who have been very vocal already. Uh, but we have not seen any indication that this has really upset President Obama or the White House. Secretary is, is Kerry be- put George, out a quasi-response. Is, is that because Secretary Kerry is basically making the statement that the president would make if he was secretary of state this is basically their policy well yeah right that israel if you don't do what we're saying and when i say we're i mean the obama administration if you don't do what the obama administration wants to do then you're going to end up like south africa which is uh which was by the way destroyed as a, as a, as the apartheid state was destroyed so to threaten that you will become that is also to threaten your destruction uh, and so, uh, again, that does seem like it's coming from uh, the administration. Do what we want or you will end up being destroyed. By the way, and remember, that apartheid government was destroyed. Yeah, and also uh, 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 the doctrine of apartheid is an international crime under the International Criminal Court's jurisdiction under the Rome Statute. So that statement, using the word apartheid in the same sentence with Israel, was a very, very loaded term with serious repercussions. Again, folks, this is why we need to stand with Israel right now. Over 50,000 signatures already. ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. Let me go ahead and turn our attention from the situation in Israel to one that's similar, and that is the situation that's developing in Benghazi in light of the recent emails that have come out dealing with the fact that we now know the talking points were changed, that this wasn't about a video, but this was a pre-planned protest. We're going to go right to the phones. Teresa's calling in from Texas on line five. Teresa, welcome to JSECU Live. Hi, Teresa. I'm angry. I'm upset. I lived through the Nixon era. I did too. And, you know, we didn't tolerate as Americans back then, even a president who was good in foreign affairs, we did not tolerate lying, spinning, cover-up. Well, I've got the actual email. It's public now because uh, there was litigation. The White House was forced to issue this. They were not going to, believe me. And it says, the email set from Ben Rhodes, the Deputy National Security Advisor, to leadership within the White House, including the press secretary to President Obama, under goals to underscore that these protests are rooted in an internet video and not a broader failure of policy. Jordan, that was wrong now. It was wrong then. And the administration, as Teresa just said, this, I think, is a huge cover-up. There's more to it, by the way. And it shows you the nature of this cover-up. And we're just getting to it now. We're finally starting to see 
military leaders, uh, generals, uh, uh, and again, Brigadier General from the Air Force who testified saying uh, that we could have tried to save these Americans, that we should have done something. You know, people talk about how long it took, the seven hours, but that was the ultimate outcome. They didn't know why they were making those decisions, how long this attack would continue, how long the Americans would be able to hold off. Some of those uh, brave Americans who were fighting back would be able to hold their spot and continue to fight. So why didn't we try? And we've now had, uh, again, a Brigadier General from the Air Force who was at AFRICOM, which is based in Germany, but oversees all of our uh, command in Africa, all of the U.S. forces in Africa, and said, uh, who has come forward for the first time, really, and, and said something different from the administration, which is that we ultimately ultimately should have tried. We didn't try to do anything. Well, the reality is the follow to that is the American people are the ones paying the price. And of course, we have four Americans that are dead uh, because of our own government's failures and at least failure to report the story of what actually happened here. And my concern with all of this, whether it's the Middle East policy uh, with Fatan, Hamas, whether it's pushing Israel into this, you know, if you don't negotiate and get a two-state solution with Hamas, who's calling for you, as we said in the beginning of the broadcast, calling for your destruction, you're somehow becoming an apartheid state. Couple that with the Secretary of State's comments, couple that with the emails on Benghazi. Look at who we supported, Mohammed Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood-backed leader in Egypt. Jordan, it seems like on every move, in the least in the Middle East strategy, the Obama administration, the policies of the president have picked the wrong side. Yeah, this this administration's chosen uh, the wrong side over and over again, and they've done so actively. And then you can even question when the side they've chosen has prevailed was at best, like in Libya. And you go to, of course, Egypt, where we backed the Muslim Brotherhood, the people overthrew the Muslim Brotherhood, and we're back to having a military leader in charge of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and so not a not very different situation to what Egypt was and has been since the 1950s. Uh, so we go there. Look at Syria. A continued civil war, chemical weapons used, uh, a new kind of, in a sense, Cold War war developing uh, between Russia in the world. You've right. got the, the provocations in Ukraine, uh, and you've got uh, Russia's involvement with Assad in Syria. And uh, again, we're sitting down with Iran. We don't know the outcome of those negotiations, but this administration has taken on a lot and has so far made very bad decisions. There's an interesting comment from the Air Force Brigadier General Robert Lovell from a hearing that took place uh, May 1st. I want to play it. This was in the context of the Benghazi uh, attacks and was this in fact a video or was this a planned attack? Listen to this. What we did know quite early on was that this was a hostile action. This was no demonstration gone terribly awry. To the point of what happened, the facts led to the conclusion of a terrorist attack. Well, how much clearer could it be? And that someone was in command authority. So there you have it, folks. That's why we are taking the stand. We are with 50,000 other Americans and people from around the world standing with Israel right now. We've got a petition up. We're not going to fund Hamas. We're going to stand with Israel. We know the scriptures are clear. I'll bless those that bless thee. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. I want to encourage you to take a stand with Israel right now. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. Two two five five again. ACLJ.org or eight seven seven nine eight nine two two five five. Let me encourage you to share this information. By the way, on Facebook and Twitter, follow Jordan on Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash Jordan Seculo. Share the information. I've got a Facebook page. Jordan does, and the American Center for Law and Justice like that page. Get this information out and stand with us with Israel at ACLJ.org or eight seven seven nine eight nine two two five five. We'll see you next week. It is a dangerous and deadly combination, and it represents a grave threat to Israel. Hamas and the Palestinian Authority have announced their long-planned unity government. The terrorists of Hamas will join the extremists in the Palestinian Authority, united in their resolve to destroy Israel. Here's the problem. The United States provides hundreds of millions of taxpayer funds to the Palestinian Authority. And the fact is that if this unity government is finalized, the U.S. will actually be funding Hamas. Don't let that happen. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and send a message to the president and to Congress. Tell Washington, tell the Obama administration, not one dime of your taxpayer dollars should fund jihadists. Add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's one 1- 877-989-2255 or you can add your name online aclj.org